This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now it's time to get loopy on this. So this section is going to provide some additional details of the loop construct. I'm also going to introduce a new procedure called print business days. Again, just as a reminder, if we were starting from scratch, we would come over here and we'd say create new procedure, enter our procedure name, enter our parameters. I've already started the code, so I'm just going to come over here and enter that, and then I'll walk you through it. So I've got my print business days. I'm going to accept a start date and an end date. And something that I've run into very frequently writing business applications is the need to know how many working days are between two dates. So working days generally means Monday through Friday. That can change up and sometimes you include holidays and stuff. But in general, business days is Monday through Friday. You'll do this fairly often if you get into financial applications. So what I'm going to do is I've got my start date, my end date. I create a loop counter. I start my loop. And then I'm going to exit my loop when the start date plus the loop increment is greater than the end date. So if I have, say, January 1st through January 10th, those are the dates I pass in. Each time through, I'm going to increment. So January 1st plus zero is January 1st. That's less than P end date, so it'll keep going. January 1st plus three, you know, six, nine. Of course, it's going to increment one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When I hit, say, 10, it's going to be January 1st plus 10 is January 11th. It'll end the loop. If my day of week, the numeric day of week, so that's one through seven, is two, three, four, five, or six, a one is Sunday, a seven is Saturday. So if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, I'm going to do a DBMS output and display the value. I'm going to show the day of week and then the actual date. I exit the if. So that means basically the if is saying, don't do this if it's Saturday or Sunday. I come out of the if, I increment my loop. So I go from zero to one, to two, to three, to four, until I'm finally finished. Now, to show you how this works, so I have this print business days. I'm going to start with sys date, which is today's date. My end date is going to be sys date plus 10, so 10 days from now. So I'll go ahead and run this. So I started with Friday, 12th of August. So that's going to be sys date plus zero. Saturday is plus one. Sunday's plus two. We ignored those. Monday is plus three. Tuesday's plus four. Wednesday's plus five. Thursday's plus six. Friday's plus seven, Saturday's plus eight, Monday's plus nine. Then I'm doing where it's greater than, so the Monday is the 10. So I'm, I'm zero through 10, basically. And if you don't want to be inclusive, you would change the way you wrote your code to be greater than or equal to. I wanted it to be inclusive. So that's why I'm getting Monday. If I say greater than or equal to, it would stop at Sunday. Let me just run through and hit all the major points one more time, because this is some new code. So I've got my loop increment, I've got my loop, I'm going to exit when the start date plus the loop increment is greater than the end date. Again, you want to be inclusive or exclusive, you could say greater than or equal to. So instead of being, in my example was 10, it would hit the ninth one, 1 plus 9 would be 10, and it would exit. I want it to be inclusive to include that final date. So that's why I have greater than. Now. I have my number of week format mask in my two char. If I had DD, it's the number of day of the month. And if I have DDD, it's the number of the year. So if I wanted to return which day of the year it is, the 127th day or whatever, I would use DDD. And again, in here, I'm actually showing DD, which is the day of month. And then our output again, just to show. Okay. Now our exit is called a conditional exit. If I wanted to, I could create an unconditional exit. And that says, if you hit this exit, I don't care where it is, what it's doing, or anything else. So let's go ahead and clear this. I'll run my code. It's in the body, main body. It's not in an if. So I'd expect to see one dbms output. If it was at the weekend, I wouldn't even have expected to see one. But because it's a Friday, I expect to see one dbms output and then it exits. And that's exactly what it did. So it hit that exit and totally exited. A little bit more advanced, won't use it as often, but comes in very handy, is the continue. 
This is new in 11G, and I'm actually running 10G, so I'm not going to run this code. Continue says, when you hit this, instead of exiting, go back up to the beginning. So if I ran this code like this, it would come down, it would do this first part, it would check to see if it's a day a week, do the output, continue, go back up here, and never increment my loop increment, which means I'd be in an endless loop, and that would be a bad thing. So that's the end of part one of loops. In a few minutes, I'm going to come back to part two. We're going to include holidays using a while loop, and then finally we're going to end with a for loop.